Whenever I encounter a guitar technique that I struggle with, the last thing in the world that I want to do is practice it. I'd much rather come up with a kick-ass Mastodon style riff etude to get the kinks worked out. Like this one. Well, hey kid, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Practicing sucks, but playing is fun, which is why the entire concept of etudes makes sense. Etudes are things that have been around since the dawn of musical time, and the idea is, is rather than sitting down and practicing a boring exercise, why not learn a cool sounding song that incorporates the techniques that you're trying to learn? You're gonna stay a lot more engaged as you're practicing it, and there's also an end goal in sight. That's something with like exercises that I always find to be a bit abstract, right? It's like, when do you win the game? Whenever you get that exercise up to a certain number of clicks on the metronome or what, right? It's just kind of abstract and endless. But whenever you're working towards playing a song or playing a riff or whatever, there's an end game in sight when you can play the tune. I think just simply having that finish line in mind also makes the etude premise a lot more practical and a lot more effective. And the topics in question for today's Mastodon style etude are inside and outside picking. It seems like about every guitar player I talk to thinks that they were born naturally gifted at either outside picking or inside picking. But the truth of the matter is it all just depends on whatever you expose yourself to and what you practice. This practice etude will have you working on your inside and outside string changes for a total body pick and workout. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page patreon.com slash Ben Eller guitars sign up today even for just a buck a week and you're gonna get access to a ton of downloadable tabs bonus lessons backing tracks and so much more this week everybody who supports my channel on any level is getting an absolute metric ass ton of stuff I'm providing you guys with some practice tracks for this etude at a couple of different tempos. I'm also uploading the MIDI files, that way you can build your own perfect practice session at home. And I'm also uploading a special bonus list and showing you guys how you can take this inside-outside concept into a sick three-note-per-string shreddy run a la Paul Gilbert. Also be uploading practice tracks for that one as well, as well as downloadable tabs for both lessons. So don't delay, sign up today even for just one buck a month. Thanks! Gear wise for today's video, I'm playing my lovely Sir Modern Terra here into the Friedman BE100. That's going into the Sir RLIR box with an own hammer impulse response loaded up. Any kind of delay or reverb is coming through logic. Before we start breaking it down, let's do those tasty licks again at stepdad speed. This is in the key of D minor and it uses the D minor scale for all these riffs. 
And uh, it's all alternate picks. So start with a downstroke, follow with an upstroke. You're gonna do that the entire way through. Again, it's based on two shapes. Here's the first. We're gonna start off here on the note D on our low E string. And what we're gonna do here is to play D and A at first. Playing this straight triplets. Triplet, 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 triplet. Now, after you've played that three three times in a row, the fourth time is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna go like this. Triplet, triplet. Okay. You'll notice I'm just walking up the scale there on the A string, G, A, and B flat. So all together you're gonna have one, two, three, four. So you'll notice that all those string changes right there happen on the outside of the strings, because we were going down, up, down, up, down, up. So those are all your outside changes. Now after you play that last ascending lick, we're gonna then switch to the inside picking variant, which is gonna sound like this. Pretty simple, just going back and forth here between your A note and your D note here on the low E string. Triplet, triplet. You're just gonna do that four times in a row. Triplet, 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 triplet. So all together, if you play that entire thing, you're gonna have both your outside and inside string changes. Let's try it a few times in a row here. Triplet, 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 triplet. It's about run out of dang breath right there. So that's the entire D minor section. Now after this, we're gonna change over here to this F major section, which sounds like this. Very heroic sounding. Now this is the same idea, outside the first time, inside the second time. Here's the sets of notes you're gonna be using. Start off here on the F note on your A string. We're gonna be using its fifth here, the C note on the D string. We're gonna play like this for the first three reps. Triplet, 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 triplet. And just like what we did earlier, the fourth time through is gonna feature a little walk up like this. Triplet, triplet. So I'm just walking up there, the B flat, the C, and the D notes on the D string. After this, we're gonna have the inside variant featuring the fifth and the root. And it's gonna sound like this. So you'll notice there on the fourth time, all we did is to play that C note and let it sustain the rest of the measure. One, two, three, four, and. Now that pause is very deliberate in there. I put that in the riff, that way you guys can use that as a perfect kind of time to self-check and see if you have been building up tension as you've been playing all those consecutive triplets. So use this little rest period while we're sustaining that note right there to do a full body self-check to see if you notice anything relax suddenly whenever you're not playing. This could be like your picking hand loosens up, maybe your fingers over here can relax for a second. Uh, might be something upwards in your forearm, or your shoulder, or even your neck. If something relaxed, it means that it was tense prior. And if it was tense, that means you need to learn how to keep it loose the entire time. After this, we're gonna just simply transplant that first thing that we played over here onto the A position. So I'm starting up here on the seventh fret D string. Play that exact same figure on the string pair of the D and G strings. It's gonna sound like this. And then we move on here to the cursed pair, the G and B strings, the pair of strings where none of your shapes work anymore. This is essentially gonna be the same thing as this major shape that we played on F earlier, but we've gotta change that shape a little bit to account for the tuning of our stupid B string, who's always messing things up. Okay, it's gonna look like this instead. Instead of making your traditional kind of power chord shape to start here with C as your root note, you're gonna to have to stretch that shape out a little bit more higher. So I'm on five and eight fret wise, or C and G note wise. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I'll show you the way that I did it and then another way you can practice it too. We're gonna start off going between the root and fifth right there, just like always. 
Now at this point to do the run, which needs to be F, G, A, you could kind of do this deal right here. Or if you want to get really stretchy with that left hand. The way that I chose to play it is to transport that A note here down onto the high E string. So I play it like this. That's got a little bit more inside outside picking too, because I think you gotta be able to be spontaneous about this and switch between inside and outside picking if you wanna become like an accomplished alternate picker. So here's how I play that last section. So all together it's gonna sound like this. And then the inside picking section is just gonna have the fifth and the root. And again, that little rest break there at the very end. So in this position, we're gonna have. At this point, we're gonna go here to the D on the B string, and it's fifth, the A note here, and play the exact same thing that we started with. It's just a couple octaves higher. It's gonna sound like this. Same shapes as before. We don't have to mess with any weird tuning stuff here on this string pair. Now at this point to play the F major section, we're just going to jump up here to the sixth position. We're gonna have just F and C, root and fifth. And again, same shape as what you played here for our second section. So all together, we're gonna be starting off here on D minor. F major. A minor. C major. D minor. And that F major to end there. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of things that you can do to maximize your effectiveness at practicing this. Now you can jump right in and start playing with the riffs and the practice tracks I'm providing on Patreon at like a slower tempo if you want to. Or you can do like what I did and just simply make a power chord and practice that pattern between those two notes like this. <laughs> What you want to really focus on is emphasizing the first note of all of those triplets. Triplet, 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 triplet. You'll notice that because this is triplet bass, meaning groups of three, and we're alternate picking it, which means groups of two down up, that means that the first accent is going to happen on a downstroke, triplet, and the second accent, triplet, is going to happen on an upstroke. This is something that throws a lot of players off. Me and Nick Bocott were talking about that recently in our discussion about Dimebag Daryl over on the Sweetwater channel. A lot of metal players have a hard time accenting with ups, and playing stuff like this that's based on triplets will not only help you get more control out of that right hand, but it's also really gonna draw your focus in on that string change, because that second accent, triplet, triplet, happens right after a string crossing. So I think whenever you're adding in that extra added focus on that upstroke that's happening on the higher string, it can really help you concentrate on it and nail that motion that you're looking for. As you practice all those inside and outside string changes, be sure that the pick is cleanly getting over the lower string to make it to the higher string, okay? So in other words, I'm not just simply trying to plow through it like that to get to that upstroke. I'm trying to really make sure that I clear the A string so I can get under there and snag it with that up. Same thing whenever I do that upstroke. I don't want to do an upstroke that also blows through the low E kind of sloppily like that. I want to make sure that I got a downstroke that's clearing the A string and I got an upstroke that's clearing the E string. It's going to be kind of like an X feeling pattern if you're doing it right. 
-hmm. to get those two kind of diagonal strokes that go in and out of the strings like that. Again, focus on being clean and controlled and rhythmic. Focus on the speed last. If you don't have the control, if you don't have the groove, then adding a ton of speed on top of it is not going to help anything. So don't be afraid to take it nice and slow. Make sure you're staying really relaxed as you practice these things. So there you go guys, a wicked pick and workout and some insight into the etude mentality. I really hope you guys put that stuff into practice and start writing riffs and challenging musical ideas to work on a certain technique rather than just mindlessly sitting in front of the metronome all the time. I'm not saying that metronome time is worthless. I do tons of that myself, especially to like really warm up. But I find whenever I master a technique, it's usually because I have used it in a song. Like for example, all of my like classical guitar and finger style stuff and like my bass playing that I do, I've seriously never practiced any of that stuff. I've never practiced bass, period, ever. I don't. I just play songs. And playing songs and stuff is what taught me the techniques that I need. Same with the classical guitar stuff. I think some of the first classical stuff that I really got into was like Matteo Carcassi's 60th opus. It's a set of like, I'm trying to remember, it might be like 24 different etudes that all emphasize a certain technique. So it might be a specific kind of finger roll thing. It might be like a pull off or hammer on thing in the left hand. But he wrote these beautiful pieces of music that are just there to kind of secretly teach you a technique. It's honestly the same way that like our moms used to trick us to eat vegetables where it's like, you know, the airplane's coming into the hangar, but it's a, it's a spoonful of vegetables actually. If you make it into a game, suddenly it's bearable. But if you're just sitting there practicing, you're probably zoning out, you're probably not having any fun, and it's probably not gonna stick with you as much as it would if you were doing that same thing in the context of a sick riff. So don't run away from your fears, turn them into gnarly riffs and thank me later. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. If you like this channel and want to help support what I do, be sure to check out that Patreon page. There's all kinds of good stuff waiting for you over there. Tons of bonus lessons, tons of backing tracks and downloads, as well as the practice tracks to go along with today's lesson, as well as the extra bonus lesson to go along with this one, showing you guys how to take this picking concept into a sick lead line rather than a riff. So don't delay, sign up today. Click that link down there in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Hope everybody's been doing well. Now it's time to get away from the computer and go play some guitar. Let's click it. More picking.